Hello again, thanks for clicking on by. Today, I'm doing a video for you. A lot of people keep asking about this $150 watch that I bought last year, and here it is, still on my wrist. The OnePlus watch by OnePlus. So how do I like it? How is it aged? Would I recommend it? And what's cool about the watch still? Those are good answers, right? Well, I'm gonna follow my format that I did with several other watches, and I came up with 11 things to know. 11 things you must know about the OnePlus. So that's what we're gonna do today. And we're filming in the car again because it normally has pretty good audio. And right now I'm filming on the DJI Action 2 combo, dual screen combo, that's what it is, and we might film on some other phones as well. So right off the bat, let me show you something. So I was just about to take a walk, but it has this error. Expired GPS info may cause slow location. Please connect the watch to your phone and update F F Ephermis, Ephermis info. So we click the check mark, whether, whether it gets GPS or not, that's the question. Luckily, I do have the phone with me. So what we can do is just open up the phone. Because this is a OnePlus watch, I thought it would be very, I don't know, fitting to have it still be connected to this Hasselblad OnePlus 9 Pro. This is the phone that I've had it connected to the whole time, pretty much. I did have it connected to other phones, uh, a couple other Android phones, and it worked all right. But OnePlus to OnePlus, you know, if you have an Apple Watch, you would connect it to an Apple phone, etc., etc. It will quickly connect to the phone, and then it should, should be the operative word, update. There we go. This is really funny. I've turned on all permissions, and I still get the error. But check this out. If we go to Manage and scroll line down to Device Settings, if you can see that, a little bit of glare. Device update. I think there's an update. This over-the-air OTA focuses on a problem solving that the watch failed to pair with Android 12 and or updates. Learn more. Spotify optimization, etc., etc. Okay. And they recommend we do that. So we're going to update it real quickly to W301GB underscore B underscore 70 underscore 0704. Update now. Turn on auto over Wi-Fi. Turn on. Yeah, just update it. There we go. Downloading. So we'll quickly update it and see if that fixes this little weird GPS thing as well. Yeah, OnePlus is pretty good about the whole animations. And overall, I think they've been really good keeping the watch up to date. That's one thing that makes a watch really good and We'll say this is number one, because it is. Communication, or communication with the mothership. How does your watch communicate with the smartphone? It, it does well. One thing it doesn't do is, if you put your watch into Do Not Disturb, say, the OnePlus phone, it doesn't put the phone into Do Not Disturb. Uh, both Samsung and Apple can do that, the OnePlus cannot. At first I thought, well, okay, well this is something they'll fix, they haven't fixed that as of yet. The other thing I hope this is going to fix are some of the bugs, and, and we'll get to those really soon. This is what the watch looks like when it's receiving a upgrade package, and you just have to keep the phone nearby the watch, of course. And this can take a while, so I'm not going to film this whole thing. Let's see, it's uh, 14.29 on a Saturday afternoon. We'll come back in a bit. Been several minutes and it's still upgrading. So that must have been a bigger upgrade than initially thought. Well, let's talk about some more communication features. So what happened was I got really busy and instead of wearing the OnePlus watch myself, I loaned it to my friend, uh, we'll just call him Darcy. And he said he never had a prompt in the app to sync with the watch, which is good. It just synchronizes, and that's what a watch should do. You shouldn't have to force it to synchronize. Apple does that well, Samsung, Garmin, Fitbit, and many others. Also, he said the app 
and the tract info were always ready for him, and he felt it was a little better than some of the other wearables he had. Okay, number two, camera quality. This doesn't have a camera. Some watches do. I actually did test a Samsung Gear 2 a couple years ago, and that had a camera. This one doesn't, so NA, not applicable. Number three, dependability. Does it function when needed? Well, that, that's a tricky question because during the first couple weeks of having this watch, it wasn't functioning, and I really honestly felt as if I was a beta user, and it lost data and lost steps. After the first month, to be honest, that's when it started to be more concrete and more refined. Not as good as a Samsung, not as good as an Apple. Yeah, I know I'm kind of distracting with all the gadgets, but it was stable. It was a stable software install, and, and that's what OnePlus should have shipped it with. In all honesty, they should have waited until probably the end of June of last year before they shipped out the watch. And number four, design. How's the build quality? Well, my friend Darcy said, seems to be a very solid device with a good band. He said the watch lens might be slightly domed. Eh, a little bit, sure. I agree with this, that it's probably cool for some things, but the screen protector that I had on there was really lame, and we actually ended up taking that off. But overall, you know, this is 11 months old. The screen is held up quite well for being so naked and afraid, if I can use that term. There's a couple of scuffs here and there, but yeah, I could have used one more toughness layer of Gorilla Glass. Number five, the screen quality. Touch sensitivity. He and I both thought the screen was easy to read, even for our old eyes. And I often need glasses, and so does my friend Darcy, but we could see the screen quite well, and I'll show you that in just a minute as the upgrade's over. The UI, number six, how easy is the user interface? Let's see if it lets us into the app. Device update, device disconnected. This is one of the things I like about OnePlus. They have those fun animations. So as far as the UI in the app, it's nice. And what's on the watch quickly synchronizes to the app, and that's what you want. Again, initially that first month, as I was an unpaid beta tester for OnePlus, it was, it was a tough go. But now it's tracking my sleep. It tracks naps. Garmin, are you listening? We need to do that. Calories, activity, workout. It does quite well. Every time I test the SBO2, it's always really high. It rarely registers a low one. I feel the accuracy of the blood oxygen could be a little more consistent. So number seven, battery life and charging. Will it endure an entire day? That's really important. I believe I used it for over a week and it never needed charging again. So Darcy thought it was excellent. I have done more battery testing than Darcy and I've been able to get a total of 10 and a half days. That was the max. If you use AOD always on display, you'll get about four to five days. If you turn that off and you don't use SBO2 and you don't use uh, any GPS activities, it does have onboard GPS, which is a huge thumbs up, then you'll easily get 12 to 14 days. The cool thing is it has fast charging I'll show that in just a little bit. I've been wearing the watch on a regular basis lately, preparing for this video, and I've been wearing the battery down. It takes quite a while, which is a really fun factor that it takes days to wear the battery down, whereas an Apple Watch, for example, because I like to poke fun of them, you can wear the battery down to 50% in half of a day. This takes nearly a week to wear down. As far as warranty and support, that's number eight. That's a big one for me. And I have had to deal with warranty and support through OnePlus before, and they're good. I haven't had any issues with them. I've had to return things. I've had to exchange products. I, I did have an issue with this, and they almost, they were going to send me a new one, and then they did an update, and then it got fixed. Now, I know this is going to come up. This is not the original band. That's at home. This is a tick watch band, so you're not going to see the original band, but you're not missing much. I didn't really like it. And I like this tick watch band better because it has the orange accents and it breathes better. The other one's a solid band. And if you notice, 
all the bands that I wear usually have the holes in them. And the one that OnePlus ships with this, at least last year when they were selling these, it was a solid silicone and I just didn't like it. Continuity and the ecosystem. Th this is a tricky one because continuity is, all right, well, what happens month after month? And the other thing is, is kind of ties back into support. Is there continuity between products? Are they going to continue to support this? And then also, how's the continuity between the peripherals, meaning, okay, the phone and the watch, and this kind of communication, but overall, I don't think there really is an ecosystem, which is bad. So that kind of lacks the continuity. There is a OnePlus TV, but I have yet to see that here in the US. So that's not something I can test. There is an app on the watch for that, but I don't have that at this time. Number 10, sounds and audio performance. This actually does have a built-in speaker. Unfortunately, you can't use it. <laughs> you have to have headphones paired, and that does work. I've been able to pair the OnePlus Buds to it, and they worked just great. And you can pair the Nothings, and I'll show you that in just a minute. But the actual sound on the device is nice. I do wish they had a few more sounds, but again, I, I had a hard time comparing this watch to anything else. For the cost factor, you know, at $150, it doesn't really compare or relate to any of the other devices that I have because there's so much more. In a way, OnePlus is in a field all on its own. There are a lot of Amazon watches that are even less than 150 that I could compare it to, but I decided not to do that. Number 11, tips and tricks. Well, Darcy had to say that he enjoyed seeing the greater number of things this device was tracking, including stress levels. When looking in the app, it had a deeper amount of advice about improving. For example, it analyzes many different aspects of sleep and it had good advice to give. He felt better taken care of by this device than other activity trackers. And I feel the same way. For such a inexpensive device, it does offer a lot. As far as the stress tracking, it, it's okay. I think overall, I would give the OnePlus watch a B rating, B, B plus rating, if you compare it to other watches that are more expensive, but it has been more consistent. And that's one thing it lacked initially. And I'm, I don't want to say I'm proud of OnePlus, but I'm happy for them that they were able to make the device more consistent. I think for a smartwatch, or especially one that you're going to rely on for your health, that's one thing that you really need. So the watch is updated now. Let's take a look. So this is one of the many watch faces that you have. So if we swipe to the right, there's our heart rate, sleep today, there's the player. You can do blood oxygen, which we'll uh, test in just a minute. And let's see what's on the app. So one of my favorite features on here is that, well, let me turn off the light. Nothing worse than overhead glare, right? So if you pull down, you get that cool animation, updating data. I haven't had any synchronization problems in the last 10 months, which has been wonderful. Here are all my workout records. So as you can see, I feel that I've tested the watch quite thoroughly over the last 11 months. And there's a yoga workout, running, running, uh, plyometrics, and et cetera, et cetera. And this is where it gets kind of confusing. Oh, that's kind of dark, isn't it? <laughs> there's workout tracking, which is all good and dandy, right? But then there's workout analyzing. So does OnePlus analyze all those workouts, or are they just simply tracking them? Let me show you. Right here, if we go to the walk, we have the map. We have the heart rate, we have the heart zones, cadence, elevation, cool. Now we go to this rowing machine workout. We have heart rate, heart zones, there's no strokes per minute. So even though it shows rowing machine as one of the 114 different workouts, it's really just tracking that you did the rowing machine and it's not telling you unique data about it. And yoga for the same thing, it does heart rate, the time you're doing yoga, but there's no poses, there's nothing of that nature, and that's something that uh, Garmin and Samsung have done a better job and even Fitbit. 
So yes, they do have all these workouts that you can do. We're gonna do a quick accuracy test with the OnePlus watch. I'm gonna go climb some stairs. I'll document how many flights before and after, and we'll document steps, and we'll compare those to a few other watches so you can see the level of accuracy that I've been so you can see the level of accuracy that I'm referring to. I hope I'm answering all your questions. See you real soon. So in total, the OnePlus watch offers 110 different workout features. However, of those 110 workouts, cycling, swimming, walking, running, I think about 20 of them are unique. The other ones are all just they're just categorized like, oh yeah, I played Batman 20 times last year and it doesn't actually give you reports and I was hoping that would be one thing that they were going to be adding in this new release and they have yet to do that. Anyway, I, I hate to, it's not that I'm being critical, but I do need to be honest with you because I think that's one reasons that you come to my channel. You want, you know, the, the honest approach and the honest perspective of these watches that a lot of channels won't give. So OnePlus, I'm pretty sure they don't know that my channel exists and, and that's okay. Uh, I'm not sponsored. They didn't give me any discounts on the watch. The only discount I got was because I pre-ordered it and then they sent it to me, I think two days after they announced it. But it is very comfortable to wear. Let me show you some fun things, kind of tips about the watch that I've enjoyed over the past 11 months. After you open up the OnePlus app, you can go to Manage. I do like the Get Up Reminder. That's quite nice. I like how you can quickly synchronize all your smart alarms. And as far as the alerts, they're very consistent. They've done a good job on that. And then it lets you decide if you want the notifications when you're not wearing it. So that's nice. The other cool thing is the alarms. I don't know if you saw that right here. Right here in Clock. So if I set an alarm on my device, it comes on there, so that's kind of cool. So right here at the top, one of my favorite, you can check the battery percent or the battery charge remotely anywhere in your house or office. So right there it says connected, it's at 50%. So while it's charging, you can keep track of it. Now one thing they still have not added is, yeah, right there. They don't have tap to wake. I really thought they were gonna add that in this next update, but they have not. But they did fix some stability issues and that's a good thing. So you have to push a button, but the raise to wake works. I'll show you the AOD, it still works. I was kind of hoping that they might add something. AOD is real easy to do. You just swipe down, go to settings, go to display and brightness, always on display, turn on, and then you can say always on display. So you have fireworks, pin loop, neon red, and echo motion, which reminds me of Pink Floyd. And then raise to wake, you can turn that on or off. The auto brightness works great. Screen off time and on time, I like that they have that setting. I actually like to leave it on because the battery charges so fast, you don't need to worry about it. Now the one fallacy or one big bug that they've had is when you put it in a do not disturb mode at night or when it automatically goes into do not disturb, will it turn off AOD? Let's see. So we'll swipe down. Put it in a do not disturb, and then we'll wait a second and come back. So here we have the OnePlus watch, midnight black. The watch faces are so much fun. This is one thing they did a really good job on. So right here, you can do all out AI outfit, where you can take a photo of your, your outfit and match the watch face. Right here, I can go to all, and now we can view the dynamic, minimalistic, joy, utility, sport, the watch faces are really cool. I can see why so many people like the watch. And then when you find a watch face that you want, you just click on it. So we'll do the Bumblebee one. And then I'll click Add Watch Face. It quickly adds. So we'll do this real time. And yes, you want to make sure you have an internet connection. And there's that beautiful watch face. Come on, that looks gorgeous. I'm hoping in the next version they follow Samsung and they add the uh, ticking noise to the watch. I think that'd be really cool. So they have not fixed one of my annoying bugs. So at night, when you want to go to bed, Do Not Disturb will automatically come on, and I'll, I'll show you how to set that in just a minute, 
but then you have to go into settings, go into display and brightness, and unchecked, uncheck always on display, otherwise your watch is gonna wake you up. So that's kind of bothersome. So to edit do not disturb, you have to go to the watch. So again, swipe down from the main screen, go to settings, do not disturb bedtime. You can enable now, which I have, and then do not disturb period one, I have it going off, well, enabling at 8 p.m. until nine in the morning, and then they have a second window, which I do for work, 11 a.m. to 12, because that's my lunchtime. So that's really cool that they have two, and these just work. So now if I take that off, and then you can edit these as well, so if I wanna make that later, to nine o'clock, then I'll still receive notifications. You just swipe back, really easy notification, really easy navigation, pa the uh, function key to workout, and you can change it to activities, workout record, heart rate, whatever you want. So I can click heart rate. When I click that bottom button, it goes right to heart rate. And then this one will go to your apps. So really nice fluid screen actually. And then it even has a barometer, which is nice. And then you swipe up, Altimeter in meters, and then we swipe back, timer, stopwatch, alarm clock, weather, music. You can store music uh, on the phone, which is quite easy. It has a breathing exercise, stress, there's your sleep, heart rate, yeah. and then it logs all your activities. And then you get a, a slight notification on the watch once you reach these. It's not that much fun. I think the ones by Garmin and Fitbit are better. It does track floors. And I, I don't know why, but for some reason, that's one of my favorite features about wearables. I like to see at the end of the day how many flights of stairs that I've climbed, and I just think that's fun. So good job, OnePlus. The thing I feel that's really, really important to test is outdoor visibility. So here we are in the shade. Visibility, pretty good. Compare it to Garmin. About the same. Samsung, yeah, yeah, come on Apple. Wakey, wakey, yeah, whatever. Okay, now, we're going to the sunlight. And let's see what auto brighten, how auto brightness reacts. Can you read that? Yeah. Not bad, OnePlus. And back in the studio, yay! <laughs> I like my studio, it's my it's my comfort zone. I can know I can lav up and I know the lighting's less horrible, but that was fun to film in the library. Funny enough, uh, my son and I, the Paramount Kid, we have been to the library over 300, I think today was 357 times. We go a lot. This thing around my neck, this is what I'm gonna be filming during the bike ride, because I want to test one more thing for you, because. Remember how I was saying earlier about the exercise things? Yeah. So we did the stairs. That's coming up soon. So let's change for the bike ride and get out there because it's almost sunset. It is 1634. See? 1634. Time to ride.